this revision video is going to focus on the alcohols topic. So, like many other organic molecules we've come across in the past, the alcohols are a family of molecules. And the term we use in chemistry for families of molecules are homologous series. And what typifies all homologous series is that they have the same general formula, same functional group, that's the group of atoms that give the molecule its chemical properties. Therefore, they have similar chemical properties and a graduated trend in their physical properties. For example, boiling point generally increases with chain length. The general formula for all the alcohols is as follows, C to the N, H2M plus 1, and then OH at the end, that's the functional group. So for whatever the number N is for carbons, it will be 2 times that number plus 1 hydrogens, and then OH at the end. The functional group present here is the alcohol or hydroxyl uh, functional group, that's the OH group. Now when naming or drawing uh, alcohols, like any other organic molecule you come across, there's a a, a naming system and there's different formulae you might be asked to draw. So the naming system is exactly the same as you've come across before. That's monkeys eat peanut butter peacefully and happily, meaning it's meth, eth, prop, bute, pent and hex, giving you the number of carbons involved and the uh, ending or the suffix for these molecules is ol. So the smallest alcohol will be methanol, then ethanol, propan 1-ol, and butan 1-ol. The 1 is telling us that the OH group is on the first carbon in the molecule and not in the middle. So how we go about drawing these? There's different uh, types of formulae you can write. The simplest being molecular formula, simply the numbers of different elements uh, uh, inside the compound or molecule. But the difference with the molecular formula of the alcohols is that you always end with that functional group OH. Okay, you can have structural formula, which not only tells you how many atoms of different kinds are inside the molecule, but also where they're found. And displayed formula, which is the most detailed, which also shows you the bonding, including single bonds, uh, single covalent bonds inside these molecules. So we've got methanol, CH3OH, very simple uh, structural formula as well. And here is my structure with all the bonds shown, three hydrogen and the carbon OH group. Ethanol, two carbons in length. Here's the molecular formula, structural formula, and displayed formula for ethanol. Propan 1-ol, three carbons in length, the rest being surrounded by hydrogens with the OH at the end, as shown by the structural formula and the displayed formula. And finally, butan 1-ol, here is my molecular formula, four carbons with the but. Here's my structural formula with the arrangement that the hydrogen shown, and here's the displayed formula with the greatest detail and all the bonding shown. So we just said that these are part of a homologous series and they have similar chemical properties. The key chemical property you guys need to know about is the combustion of uh, alcohols. So I've got two examples here. We've got, first of all, ethanol. So ethanol being uh, the most common alcohol you guys are going to come across, burning an oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So this is an example of complete combustion because we're forming carbon dioxide and water as the only products. You might be required to write balanced equations for this. So here's an example of a balanced equation for the reaction of ethanol with oxygen in combustion. Ethanol molecule plus three uh, moles of oxygen forming two moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of water. So I've balanced out the carbons first, then the hydrogens, and I've finished with the oxygens. Propan 1 plus oxygen goes to the carbon dioxide and water. This is a slightly larger alcohol. Again, complete combustion because my only products are carbon dioxide and water. Here's the balanced equation. And this one was slightly trickier because when I tried just using the propan 1 on its own, I got a half. So to get rid of that half, uh, I times everything by two. So that was two propanols plus nine oxygen, forming six carbon dioxide and eight water. So it makes you happy with balancing. Look back at some previous videos if you need some practice of that, because some of these can get quite complex if you're asked to balance them. Now, your course then really focuses on different ways of making a particular alcohol called ethanol. That's the two carbon length alcohol. Um, and there's two main processes we use, which is fermentation versus hydration of ethene. I'm going to do each one as a case study, starting with the fermentation process. So fermentation is an ancient process which has been going on for thousands of years in human, human society. And essentially it involves taking glucose, a sugar, and introducing it to zymase, an enzyme found in yeast, at a reasonably warm temperature of 40 degrees, not too hot because obviously that would denature the enzyme itself, and anaerobic conditions in the absence of oxygen. And glucose, with these conditions, which you need to know, um, will uh, ferment, it will form ethanol and carbon dioxide in a chemical reaction. Now, here I might have to write a balanced equation to represent that as well. So this is glucose C6H12O6. 
Interacting with Zion maze at 40 degrees in anaerobic conditions, you will form two molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide gas. So what are the goods and bads of this process in terms of making uh, ethanol for, uh, for industrial purposes or on a large scale? Well, the pros, the goods of using uh, fermentation, are that you're using a renewable resource. You're taking sugar from vegetation, it could be sugar beet or other uh, sugar-rich uh, plants, crops, uh, which is good because that means that we are not using up a finite resource. It's just grow more plot, uh, crops in the, in the land. Um, and it only requires low temperatures and atmospheric pressures, so you're saving costs on those uh, conditions. The cons, the bads, the main ones, I'm being quite short with these here, um, are that it's a batch process, which means it's a very slow process compared to other methods. And you always perform an impure product, which is mainly a mixture. You've got to separate out that ethanol from the uh, yeast and the glucose and other sort of impurities might be present in there, maybe some. Um, sort of fibrous material as well from the, from the vegetation. So that is going to uh, be an issue which needs to be, needs to be solved. Also, you might want to consider you know, the if you're an, an LEDC country uh, that uh, there's going to be the issues with land being used for crops for fermentation versus land for food crops and maybe water being in short supply as well would also become an issue. Okay, uh, hydration of ethene. This is the other process. It has very different conditions. This is where we take ethene, an alkene, a small alkene, two carbons in length, and react it with steam under quite vigorous conditions, 300 degrees centigrade, 60 to 70 atmospheres of pressure, quite a high pressure there, and a concentrated phosphoric acid catalyst had to be present. We produce pure ethanol. Here uh, is the balance equation for that. So it's uh, ethene plus steam, uh, H2O gaseous, uh, in the presence of these conditions, 300 degrees, 60 to 70 atmospheres, and a concentrated phosphoric acid catalyst will form pure ethanol C2H5OH. What are the goods and bads of this process? Well, the pros are that it's fast. It's because it's a continuous process happening 24-7. You perform a purer product, just ethanol is produced by this reaction, and you get a good yield, much better than the previous yield from fermentation. The the bads or the cons would be that you're using up a finite resource, you're depleting our oil reserves, because of course ethene is produced through the cracking process, catalytic or thermal cracking, and of course also you're generating high temperatures and pressure, which is going to need to use oil reserves to generate those temperatures through combustion uh, in power stations. But also there's the cost um, requirements of generating such vigorous conditions as well, which have to be taken into consideration. So those are the cons of using hydration of ethene as a industrial process. But you do get a lot of uh, very pure ethene, uh, ethanol. Uh, finally, the uh, extra caveat at the end of this course is the dehydration of alcohols in the lab. So you can do the complete reverse. You can turn an, an ethanol molecule back into an ethene molecule. You can convert ethanol back into ethene. Uh, and that is a dehydration process. So what we do is we soak a piece of mineral wool in ethanol and we heat an aluminium catalyst nearby, an aluminium oxide catalyst next to it, and the hot ethanol vapors pass over the aluminium oxide catalyst and a dehydration reaction takes place and you form ethene um, and the water is also removed and we collect that gaseous ethene in a tube. We could always prove it was ethene using some bromine water which would decolorize in the presence of the ethene, it would lose its color and go from orange to colorless. The reaction taking place is ethanol is, de uh, is dehydrating to form ethene and water is being lost. As a balanced equation here, that's C2H5OH is forming CH2, CH2 double bond because ethene and water is being lost. This is a dehydration of ethanol. That concludes the alcohols topic.